anaconda don't my anaconda don't my anaconda don't want nothing that you got buns on boy toy named troy used to live in detroit big dope dealer money he was getting some coin watching shootouts with the law but he lived in the palace whoa whoa big alexander mcqueen he was keeping me stylin now that's real real All right, our guest this evening is one of the leading researchers in the quest to understand wild anacondas. Um, as we mentioned before, since 1992, he's been studying the snakes in the um, Llanos of Venezuela, and he knows them better than most people on this planet. Um, and here to tell us a little bit more about it is uh, Dr. Jesus Rivas. Dr. Rivas, you with us? Yes, I'm here. Hey, hi. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for, for coming on and, yes, and joining us. We appreciate it. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. Um, I have been dying to touch base with you for weeks now, um, given the whole situation that anacondas have kind of been facing right now in the public eye. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been working with them for basically ever um, at this point Over in time. 20 years I at mean, this point. Yeah, it, it's since 92, right, that you've been working with them? Yeah, I actually, uh, in January the 9th, it's like 23 years. Wow, specifically. Uh, 23. And, and, I mean, you weren't originally drawn specifically to them. You started doing regular research work, and then somehow did you fall into working with them, or are they something that kind of struck you and you were like, I love these guys and I want to know more about them? Well, you know, uh, I am from Venezuela originally, and I, I grew up in Venezuela. You know, anacondas are out there, and there was this, since I was a little child, this fascination with the, you know, the massive snake. And I had, when I was a baby, a kid, I, I did have G.I. Yeah, Joe's and other toys that had, like, rubber snakes and crocodiles that I played with. Um, so, so, when uh, yes, I, I started, when I had a chance, uh, right out of college, I, you know, I got the opportunity to start working with them, and, and I started, I started, you know, work with them in the field. Yes. And then from then on, I went on to continue doing my my PhD research, and after that, I was still over, I continued doing them until now. Nice. So, I mean, to this day, are you still offering? I know I saw that you had kind of like an eco tour thing going on where you have people actually participate in working with them. Do you still do that right now? Well, that that is, uh, I do, but uh, I, I will characterize it slightly different because mm -hmm. so what I do, I, I continue doing my research and the way that I've been able to fund this project for that long, one problem a lot of people might not realize, but field research is expensive, it's hard to fund, and a, a, a lot of the funding institutions really like, like genetic stuff. And yeah. So, well, I have found that at some point I ran out of funding, and I have had to come up with money. So, what I have been doing is bringing folks interested in in in, in learn and participate in the research. So they do a donation to my study, uh, and they come and join my team for two or three weeks, whatever the length of the study is. Wow. So uh, I I hesitate to call it a tourist operation because I I can only handle one or two people. I mean, I I'm not a tourist oh, guy. Nice. So when people join us. They are, they are, I'm doing my research and they are joining my team. So they are part of my team. Uh, so more than me being a tourist guy, they become researchers for the week or two that, that the, that the thing lasts. So it's not a massive operation. I can have only a, a one or two people at a time. Uh, and it works well for me and it works well for them. So I, I, I do the research that I need to do. I don't get sidetracked, you know, catered into tourists because I, I can't really do it. Really, if I did that, I couldn't do the research. Uh, uh, and the people who come normally understand that they are joining a team of hardcore biology, biology researchers. So they're, they are not first that they expect to be catered for. You know, they just join us, they live in the same quarters, we sleep the same, the same kind of accommodations we do, and, and they work all these, you know, 16 or 18 hours a day that the world requires. Does anybody bring wine on the trip? <laughs> Sorry? Does anybody bring wine on the trip? Wine, you mean? Yeah, is there vino? Does Complaining? Some, no, 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 wine, no, like vino, like drinking wine. Does somebody bring wine to the oh. trip? 
<laughs> Here we go. Okay. Oh no, you know we 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 do we do have we do have okay. uh, 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 you know Venezuelan rum is is good enough that you won't be missing any wine. Okay, I'm so uh, I'm then, so that know, is what it's I not just where we, we do take our drinks. You know when the time is proper. Right, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, no, I, I'm good. I, I'm good. I was just making sure I'm planning my year out, and I want to make sure this is something I want to do. But you know, priorities, man.